All right. Hi, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here today. Thank you. I think all the applause are well deserved for these amazing models. So let's degrade the performances a little bit. So basically, I'm going to talk about open models and open compression. Basically, this slide has been hanging since Gemma v1. Basically, we want to make AI available to everyone. So when we say that, we think about sharing the architectures, sharing the weight values, basically what we have done so far. But if we want to have everyone actually using them, we, meet to meet, we need to meet the developers where they are. And where they are is usually next to your desktop, next to your laptop, next to your mobile phone. And that's why we want to focus on frugal AI. So basically, allowing everyone from the start without some understanding or deep understanding of quantization, sparsity, any kind of compression technique, being able to just take the checkpoints and run them on your device and get the best performances out of hand. So of course, when we say frugal AI, we think about the environment, we think about energy consumption, we think about memory footprint, but we also have to think that well, we are based on the open source community. We want to contribute. And this slide, I mean, you can see that for Gemma 2, the 27B model that we shared is less popular than the quantized counterpart. So basically, you spoke and we listened. So this is an example uh, of how you can run your basically Gemma model on your phone, so iOS and Android, uh, thanks to the ODML team and the work they've done. They actually have a demo, but instead of talking about the demo that you will see this afternoon, I'd like to talk about what happened literally yesterday evening. So we were having some kind of little event because, well, we saw the LMC scores a little bit before you guys. And so we were playing some kind of games where we had to solve riddles, and I am pathetic when it comes to solving those. Hopefully, some of us had Gemma actually running on their mobile device. And in less than in a second, it was actually able to solve the, um, the riddle. And if you're from Paris, you know that some restaurants or these kind of events can be hosted underground, where you don't have any internet connection. So this is a prime example on, of why you want to quantize Gemma, especially in that case, we got free drinks for this. So this is like amazing. I know, so use Gemma. <laughs> now, in terms of numbers, when you have your Gemma model, so here, just helping you to read this graph, basically, if you start from the, from the left for you guys, that's what happens when you basically load the checkpoint. So you only have weight values. But as was emphasized so far today, we want to be able to run with very long contexts. So it's not only about just loading the model, but actually using it and actually leveraging long context. And what we highlight here is that through quantization, going from the white curve, it, which is bfloat16, which is usually the reference right nowadays, going down to Q40, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But basically, with quantization, we're now able to run a 12B model on device with up to 30K context lengths using consumer-grade GPUs or TPUs or unified memory, whatever you prefer. So what's quantization? Just a uh, quick poll. Who's familiar with quantization here? <coughs> yes, I'm not completely useless. So assume that you have your weight values from your pre-trained model. So those usually are real valued. So it's not actually a real number. Obviously, we have this representation using bfloat 16 or FP32, which is fairly high resolution. And if I ask you guys to compute, let's say, 3.9872, times 0 0.86671. Right, exactly what I expected, so you don't know the answer. And instead, if I ask you like 3 times 1 or 4 times 1, hopefully you'll get the answer. And this intuition holds true for the computer. So basically, if you go from high-resolution floating-point representations down to low bits, integers, you get memory footprint reduction and latency improvements. And that's what quantization is all about. It's going from a continuous distribution down to a discrete representation using fewer bits. So the, na the most naive way to do it usually is to scale your weights. So this is the little times s. 
Um, the reason why we do that is when you train your model, it's very unlikely that your distribution will just so happen to fit on the integer representation. Say we want to use four bits, so your support is from minus eight to plus seven, but your weights won't lie in that region, so we just stretch the distribution to fit that support. Then you round to closest. That's the most naive way to do it. And then, so those are your quantized weight. But to preserve the dynamic of your model, you have to scale back. And that's the dequantization operation. Now, if you're familiar with training, we can just do it, just do quantization, because obviously you lose a lot of information, so you will degrade the performances. So we want to preserve uh, what we've done. You don't need to take pictures, because not only, uh, hopefully, I'll explain it very well, but also we are sharing the implementation for all of this. So you don't have to do any heavy lifting. But you can take pictures of me. That's fine. <laughs> so yeah, circling back to the quantization issue. So basically, as you degrade the performances, you want to do some kind of fine tuning, which we've talked a lot about today. The issue is that the rounding operation introduces a zero gradient op. And so what we do in the world of compression, when we have a mathematical operation that we don't like, we just assume it's not even here to begin with. So basically, for your forward pass, you apply the rounding operation. But for the backward pass, you don't. You just assume that you have an identity gradient. And that's called straight through estimation. So basically, the setup that we propose for quantization over training is simple. You take your checkpoint, whether it's a pre-trained checkpoint or an IT checkpoint, and you make two copies. One of them will be frozen. And this will be your teacher in the context of self-distillation. The second one will be quantized and optimized. Now, as a result, so it's a plain and simple graph. I don't have the names of all the evals, as you can assume. Uh, actually, we have like over 100 evals for those. But basically, the idea here is fairly simple. So in the dark blue representation, we have the reference model, which is in bfloat 16. And it overlaps with its FP8 counterpart, which is two times smaller, and also its Q40 counterpart, which is four bits, integers, and one scale value for every 32 values. So that's approximately 4.5 bits per weight. And all of these overlap. So basically, we preserve the performances. And you will find all of these uh, checkpoints on jama.cpp, um, lama.cpp, or lama, hugging face, uh, media pipe. Hopefully, I haven't forgotten too many partners, but like, You'll find them pretty much everywhere. And as I mentioned earlier, every, everything is available. So this will direct you to um, the Flax implementation. So for Flax, you'll be able to run the models actually quantized, so with integer values, and be able to do the quantization over training that I just introduced on your own data. And that will actually work with one GPU. So you don't need that much compute just to fine tune on your own data and not only get the incredible results that we had with Gemma for you without it, with privacy by design and running it locally. Well, hopefully that was interesting. And uh, thank you for your attention.